Well, folks, so, came out here and put this diode in this backhoe, came right out of part, drove it about 20 feet down there to that gate, thought, well, that's it, you know? Bam, it slammed into park. <laughs> so, I, I don't remember what I did with the old diode. It was laying somewhere, but here's the diode I replaced. I would like to show you for proof, but you guys saw in the last video that it had continuity on the other diode in one direction. Here's the diode. It's another day. I I, I didn't get out here till like 8 o'clock. Or not 8 o'clock. I got out here like 6 o'clock that evening to put the diode in. And, and up against this when the sun sets here, you know... Obviously the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. This is on the west side of the valley and this is all a big mountain and the sun goes over the hill there. It gets dark a little bit earlier here than it does in the middle of the valley over there. So where are my dogs? There's Josie. Hi Josie. Josie's 100%. She's just a crazy girl. She's a crazy chick. That's a crazy girl. Oh yes. Ah. We spent 16 hours down in Wairika yesterday working on a fellow buncher. I made a little bit of a video on it. I'm going to do some more video on, but it was just such an immense amount of work. You think this backhoe has got problems, hydraulic issues, repumped the whole boom, plumbed it right. Whoever owned it before was an absolute knucklehead. And what they did is they put a processor head on it and just... They just had a bunch of stuff jerry-rigged on it. Okay, go to your ohm meter, function, bam, diode check. I don't know if the camera is picking up what the meter's reading. Is that picking up what the meter's reading? Not really, huh? Let's flop this up. Here's the new diode. The old diode, I had continuity in both directions. This diode, I do not. Well, I didn't. <laughs> so get your leads and go that way. 0.601. Swap them. Go into the other port with the red lead. See, now we have, we have no continuity. This diode is good. The other one was bad. Okay, but what's going on here is we've got a bad ground going to the relay let's read the service manual and that's what took out the diode whenever starter motor m1 is not activated the starter motor will provide a ground path ground through the s terminal of the starter solenoid to terminal one of the park black park brake latching relay so let me get a i've got the whole dash torn apart where i could get to that damn fuse panel to get i thought maybe the wire going into the bottom of the fuse block was bad where in the hell anyways that that temco yesterday man we spent some time and re-plumbing everything on the boom I mean, we had all the hard lines out of it because the guy had them all swapped around. You know, the book, and, and I, I agree with the owner. He says, I want it put back the way it's supposed to be. That way, when somebody comes and looks at this thing, they're not scratching their ass for hours going, well, what the hell is this doing up here? And what's this doing over here? That's not what the book says. You know, and I agree with him 100%. I mean, somebody just, he, he had everything. So then another thing, we we finally got the boom and we got the... We got the gather, the gather arms, the gather close, and the gather open. We got all that plumbed right. Back into the, there's a big junction block, and all the hoses come off the boom, and then they come back into the junction box, and basically it makes a 90 to go up to, there's two valves there. There's a VW18 valve and a V, I can't remember if it's a VW or MW, 14 valve. Well, they use two Lindy pumps, and it's... I don't know if I should even get that deep into this conversation. It's pretty complicated. I mean, but then what they're doing is they've got an auxiliary pump and there's there's a leveling valve on there. And they're combining the flow from the leveling valve with one of the Lindy pumps on another valve to run the saw head. So 
last night at about eight o'clock and I was still a two hour drive from home, I was figured I finally, I got the gather arms working. The problem we were having though, is the, the when you, you turn the saw switch on and then you, and I, I figured out, I got all the solenoids wired right. One of them, one of them, when you turn the saw switch on, it energizes three solenoids. And those solenoids block certain ports inside this saw leveling valve. And then when you run the leveling switch, there's another solenoid out there that's a normally closed solenoid. And what you do when you run the leveling valve, you're opening that solenoid. Then it goes open and it de-energizes two solenoids and energizes one. All that we got all that working. None of that was working. We got all that working. All the electrical is working. But it's still what happens is you run the leveling valve and then the saw tries to come on. And then it kind of stalls. It kind of the hydraulics just then it doesn't do anything. You can watch the saw blade move a little bit, and then the leveling won't work. So I went out there last night before it was getting late and I just pulled the line off the saw head, the pressure line going to the saw control valve up on the head, the Temco head, and I capped it. And then the leveling worked. I said, we have a problem back in our saw leveling valve. One of these cartridge valves is sticking and what it's doing, it's not shutting the oil off. It's supposed to, it's supposed to block the port A going, cause it's combining the flow. It's supposed to block the port A when you activate the leveling valve and it's not doing that. It's not shutting that oil, oil off to the saw. So I gotta go back and finish that sucker too, but we, we gotta finish this one too. I had to take this loose here so I could get the, uh, and this, you're not gonna have anything with this wire I got loose here. It powers up the fuse panel and everything, so. Gotta have it. Now turn the key on. So here is... That's going in like that. Three, five... This is terminal one right here. This is where I'm not getting a ground path. Okay. I have no ground there. So, get out of here. Man, the mosquitoes back over here are bad. Trying to decipher which one is that wire back here. This is obviously, where did my, Damn power probe go. This is obviously the constant power on pin 10.7 volts. The battery dying on it or charge up a little bit again, huh? So, where the wire comes through the diode, we're not getting the ground. But we got a ground there. Why don't we have... I 
the diode's working the way it's supposed to. Why do we not have a ground? Get out of here, you son of a bitch boy. I'm not, I'm not understanding this. I really ain't. Which one do we got the ground on? We got the ground on that one. We don't have a ground coming through this. Uh, is this plug bad or something? So, what's going on here? Is there, you look at the wiring schematic. Okay, here's our diode we replaced. And now it's all making sense why the diode shorted. We're losing the ground connection to the starter, M1 starter motor S terminal. The pin one on the park brake latching relay. So why, why are these, why are these, freaking idiots using you know i had this is really really familiar because years ago i had a 9320t and the operator would be going down the road in that big tractor and it would it would go into park and we ended up having to change the starter on that pile of shit to get the damn thing to quit doing it and i'd finally traced it down to the it had an enable relay, a park brake en enable relay, and it was set up just like this. And the damn thing had a bad starter, and the starter was causing all the problems with the park brake latch relay in it. So let's look at this. I'm thinking about doing, so that's going straight. Wait a second now, what, is there a wire number? Park brake. J25.8 tan on this side of the diode. EO2C 0 0.8 white on that side of the diode. Does our diode... What the hell is going on here? Thanks, Josie. I know I'm going to step in your shit any minute now. So, we, so the signal wire on the starter, they're using the signal wire on the starter to ground that relay. Let's bring this up here as well. And what I'm finding very odd, what is the wire number on that? 20EO2. EO2? EO2? What's this tan one? What's that say? One, two, five? Let me look at that again. EO2, yeah. J25. Okay. So, what the hell, huh? This is EO2. We should have continuity. Let me go from this wire here. Twenty-eight ohms. That seems excessive. Let me go down to the actual. Let me put my alligator clip on this. What do I do with it? Let's go to here. I mean, we might have to load test this wire too. Go down to the starter motor terminal.
28 ohms. That seems a little excessive to me. That's too much. Let me take off 28 ohms. That seems like a little bit too much resistance for a ground. I mean, a ground would be, to me, would be like, like, you know, point something ohms or one ohm. I mean, I'm getting, so what I'm doing is I'm going to that white wire on the other side of the diode right here, and I'm getting almost 30 ohms. 30 ohms. I think that's too much. We've got high resistance in the ground circuit, and it's even more now. And I think that's what's causing our problem. Let me take the wire off. I'm wondering if we've got a bad... The reason they've got a diode on there is because they're using the ground. When they when you go to the start position, it's going to have power on it, right? So they, they don't want that current going back the other direction when, they, when you start it. And when you let off, then it provides a ground path. Okay, so... Let me see. Trying to read this wire number. EO2. That's the wire right there. And now, I don't have any. Let's do a meter check to make sure my meter is working properly. I found my freaking problem finally. I think I found out why my diode shorted. Ugh. Meter check. Okay, meter's working fine, but now it's disconnected because shit. Shit! Shit! Uh. So the white wire, this white wire goes directly to the starter motor terminal, okay? Oh, this reminds me of that John Deere, but that 9620, no, it was a 9320 years ago. I didn't have near as much experience then. It took me a while to find it on that one. Not near as long as it. I mean, this one here hasn't been too bad. I've come to it pretty quick. I knew my diode was bad, so I ordered a diode. Then I drove it a little ways, and it did it again. I'm like, what in the hell? I have no continuity. I have no continuity on this wire at all now. So it must be must be dickered up in here somewhere. Okay. So I back probe between here. This is EO2, and it's spliced into the eye. For the, for the, and there's no, the wire is broke in the loom, somewhere. So what we're going to do, let's look in here real quick, just to see if there's anything that might be simple. Wires are running right in here. those are there I think what we're gonna do is just cut this wire right here and run a new wire up to that for a ground what they're doing is is say if the engine stalls out and you go to crank on it again the parks not still released it which is stupid it loses hydraulic pressure anyway it's gonna be 
it's going to go into park because you lost pressure. Okay, so if you read this, if the engine stalls during operation and the key switch was not turned to the off position, the process of acting the starter motor, starting the engine, will automatically unlatch the park brake relay. It does this by removing the ground provided by the starter motor when not activated to the park brake latching relay. This feature ensures that the park brake is applied when the engine is started again, and the operator intervention is required to disengage the park brake so machine operation continue, can continue. I think I finally got it. So when you run the start switch, we're just gonna bump it. That's supposed to interrupt that ground path. Put it back into park. put that fuse pan on all that stuff back together I'm gonna go drive it I'm gonna go slow <laughs> because the other day I was in like second gear on the main box here that son of a bitch went in the park and about threw me over the steering wheel
scares you to death it's going to slam in the park while you're driving down the road. So if you start this thing and say you got the park brake off, you're going to have to rock it to on and then back to off. It'll come back on. Okay. Well, I thought I would update you guys. I I don't have nothing to hide on this channel. I make a, I don't know if it was really a mistake. We knew we had a bad diode, but the mistake was I probably should have went further and found out what caused the diode to short. Because I have to agree with a comment that was made on the comment section of the last video. Diodes usually fail open. They don't usually fail shorted. So what caused this thing to short was high resistance in the ground loop which probably created heat which probably made it short so i've got to get this thing i've got some split loom to cover this up and get this thing all back i got to get it tied in back here underneath where it's not rubbing on stuff and and then i can go uh, i got to go put an scr catalyst and a, a 3d9 peterbilt missions junk and then i need to get back to my tempco uh that's going to be tomorrow. I've got a quantity control valve. I need to put on a log truck with a DD-15 in it. And he wants some suspension bushings changed or something on the damn thing, too. But yeah, anyway, uh, i got to plug this alarm back in because I got tired of listening to that piece of shit again. Put this panel in. I had all kinds of shit to do, anyway. Well, guys, there you are. Uh, so, there's more to the story on this. So... If you get this diode fell and it's shorted, it means you're getting continuity both directions. If the diode was open, you'd have an open in both directions. So the way the diode's going to work, you're going to have continuity in one direction. And the whole purpose of the diode, the way this thing, the way these knuckleheads have got this thing working, the whole purpose of this diode, right? When you go to the start position, this wire is going is spliced in to the S terminal of the S terminal is the signal side going to the solenoid on the starter. Okay. So the whole purpose of the diode is is not to send power through the ground side of this when this is in the start position. That's what that's for. It prevents current flow from going that direction. 
hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And then when it's not in the start position and there's no power going to the signal wire, then it grounds through the signal wire to the starter back to here to provide the ground path for the park lock relay. So, okay guys, well, that is the finalization on this thing.